Hello, and thank you for joining me for today's presentation on finding the best time that works for everyone with group poll. In today's session, we will cover how to create a group poll and how easily you can use your group poll to finalize a date and time that works for the majority of guests. Just a quick note before we get started, we are recording this webinar, and so it will be possible to view the session again after it has been completed. In order to get the most out of your Doodle plan, please make sure that you first set or confirm your default time zone, connect your calendar to your Doodle account, and if you will be conducting meetings using a virtual conferencing tool such as Zoom, that you connect your preferred conferencing app to your Doodle account. All of these activities can be completed under your account settings in under two minutes. If you need any additional guidance for finalizing your account settings, please refer to our support articles and search account settings. All right, let's get started. So as you can see here, I'm on my Doodle dashboard. This is the first screen I will see when I'm logging in, any time that I log into Doodle. You can see uh, some meetings that I've recently created. Perhaps the invitations are still out on those and I'm waiting for responses. And you can also see previous meetings that I may, ha may have created in the past. For today's session, we're creating a group poll. So we click on the Create button on the top right-hand side of your screen, as you can see here, and go from there to Create Group Poll. So this is the creation screen for a group poll. And what you'll see as you kind of scroll down through it is that there are three main elements. Firstly, the details around the event itself in terms of title, description, location, et cetera. The times we wish to provide as options for people to vote on. And then some additional settings which are quite um, helpful for certain use cases of group poll. For this particular session, I'm going to suggest that a group event that might be worthy of a group poll could be something like a quarterly committee meeting. So now all participants will know the exact context of what this event is as I've added the title. The description field, as you can see below, is fully optional. However, it can be very useful for adding per pertinent information about the actual event that you're inviting people to. For this specific event, I'm going to suggest that uh, adding the agenda is a good idea. So I'm going to say, so yeah, we're gonna begin with the Q1 retrospective, going back over the last quarter, and then we'll follow that by planning uh, Q2, as just as an example. However, you can add anything in here that you wish. Thirdly, we have location. So there are two elements to this, physical location and video conferencing, if you wish for people to be able to dial in. You can have one or the other or both at the same time. So let's look at with what happens if we have both at the same time. In the location field, it's free text, so you can add anything you wish. I'm going to suggest this meeting should take place at Doodle's offices here in Berlin. And that's fine if everybody, uh, I'm assuming in this particular case, knows where that is, that's perfectly fine. You don't need to add any further detail. However, if perhaps this was a meeting where you have some external people coming to the office and you're not sure where that might be, you can add the specific address and utilize powered by Google Maps feature. So the office is here. All you need to do is click on the Powered by Google Maps option, select the address, and you're good to go. In the final calendar invite that will be sent out to those people who are attending, they will have a link to Google Maps, whereby they will um, find their way easily through either walking, public transport, or driving, because they will be able to find the location without any problems. Secondly, is video conferencing. If we enable this option, we can select from the four integrated virtual conferencing or video conferencing tools we have. So Zoom, Teams, WebEx, if you happen to prefer to use those, you can connect those accounts within your account settings. However, as you can see, I have a Google Meet connected because by default, Google Meet is an option when you have a Google Calendar connected, which I do have. So we're ready to go. We have the title, the description, and the location, which includes video conferencing for those people who may be dialing in from another country or another time zone. Next up is for us to 
set the duration and times that we wish to pr pr provide as options within our group poll. So as you can see, there are some basic preset options here. However, for a quarterly committee meeting, I will suggest that 90 minutes might be a good option. And so I could select a number of hours, but in this case, I shall select 90 minutes. Then what you can see here is our basic calendar. It's a weekly view of the calendar on which we will add the event option time options. So you may notice that there are some events already seemingly added to this calendar. What these actually are, are events on my connected Google calendar. So as you can see here, this is selected. I can take all of those events off if I wish, but these events that you see here are events in my Google calendar. So that's obviously very useful because it means that I can prevent myself from double booking. And so let's just say, if I go to this week, I can make sure I avoid lunch, but I'm booking things over other events, unfortunately, and so that's not ideal. And so I can work around them and so on and so forth. You can like click and drag these particular times as you wish, as you can see here, 115 to 245, to, uh, 130, et cetera. So it's in intervals of 15 minutes, as you can see there. Let's see, there's a question from Christian, actually. Um, can I select time slots that don't start on the hour, quarter hour, et cetera? Yes, absolutely, you can. How we do this is by moving from the weekly view to monthly view. So as you can see here, it's a different view. Instead of seeing each week individually, we see multiple weeks like in a calendar, our monthly view, essentially. You can select multiple dates. And what you can actually do to your question, Christian, is if you have odd start times that you wish to have, like you could say 2.05, that's perfectly fine. You can get even more granularly detailed than that and say 2.03 p.m., uh, let's say, say 1. And then you have very, 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 very specific start times for your event. But the main advantage of monthly view is that you can select a number of dates and within those dates, you can select the times that you wish to offer to your invitees or participants. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna select these two weeks and say that I wanna offer two times. I wanna offer 2 p.m. and 3.30 p.m. on all of these dates, as you can see here. What I can also do is add different times to dates so I can break it down further whereby you see each day individually and I could add, for example, a fourth time on one of these specific days if that was uh, useful for this particular use case. When I go back to the weekly view, you will see all of these times have been added on my behalf over to the weekly view. And so what I can do from there is perhaps remove some options that are over events that I really need to attend otherwise. However, it's not necessary. They're not blocking the options from being created. So now I've created the options that I wish to present to the invitees to my group poll. The last thing for us to do is apply some extra settings. So as you can see here, set a deadline. What does this mean? Well, essentially it means that the time and date that I apply here, after that has elapsed, all voting will be closed for the poll. Nobody will be able to vote any further. And so um, the first option that I selected was Monday the 10th of April. So I'm going to suggest I need to know a week before that um, the event when the event will be in case I need to perhaps book catering or book a specific conferencing room, whatever it may be. So once this time is elapsed, nobody will be able to vote on these options anymore. So you're basically um, prompting your participants to vote quickly where possible. Next up is the option to limit how many participants can select a time. So why is this useful? Well, let's say for example, you wish to use uh, your group poll as a sign-up sheet. You could add the limit to be one, this will mean when one person has voted on any of these options, the option they've selected will be closed off to everybody else. So that's quite useful. If you wish to only have one person select each of these times, I will later show you how you can actually export this so you see it in a macro level view, which is acts perfectly as a sign-up sheet. You aren't restricted to one though, you can add five or 10 or whatever is pertinent to your specific use case. I'm going to remove that for now and move on to send automatic reminders. So this is an option whereby we will send a nudging email to those users who have not responded 
prior to the deadline you've set, or if you don't have a deadline set, to the first option that you've made available. I'll circle back on this a little bit later to show you some additional context around where this can actually be uh, utilized effectively. High participant list. So what does this mean? It means only you will be able to see the participants' personal details as the organizer. All of the participants will not be able to see who else voted or who else has been invited. So let's say I've invited 20 people to this group poll. None of those 20 people will see any of the other participant information, uh, the selections, times, votes, etc. cetera. Uh, I see there's actually another question uh, from Ryan regarding the poll deadline. Am I able to change the poll deadline if I need to give more people time to respond? Yes, absolutely. So um, once I've created my group poll, while I'm waiting for people to vote, I can go back and edit it, which will bring you back to this page, and you can actually change the deadline to your liking. If it happens that you've actually um, closed the poll, it is actually still possible to reopen the poll and then edit it again and come back here and change the settings as needed. So there is quite a lot of flexibility around that. So ho hopefully that answers your question, Ryan. Thank you so much. So now we've completed the creation process. We've added the details of what the event is about, where it will take place, the times that we are suggesting this could take place, and then we've set a deadline as part of our additional settings. So now that's all that's left for us to do is to create the invite and continue. So this is the confirmation screen. So this is what we see when we have created our group poll as the organizer. I can see that the deadline has been applied. I can see the information around it, that the duration is set correctly, the location is set correctly, there will be video conferencing added to the event, and I can see the agenda is also added. What you can also see is that I voted in the affirmative by default as the organizer of the event. So that's obviously very, very useful to see. Um, I, I see there's another question actually, it's from Kevin. Is it possible to schedule meetings for others that you're not involved in? Um, so if by that you mean, if can I book this meeting on behalf of somebody else? Indeed you can. So as you can see here, as the organizer, while I voted in the affirmative, if I edit my votes, I can go in and actually remove myself. Uh, so it could be that I can't attend all of the particular times, but an assistant can and organize on the day, or else I may wish to remove myself from all options because perhaps this event is being organized on behalf of my boss, something like this. So you do have the flexibility to either attend or uh, create this group call and invite people on behalf of somebody else. You just need to save the selections you've made and you are ready to go. So next up for us to do is to actually share this group poll with people so that they can provide their votes. So there's two elements to this. You can share with the direct link, as you can see here. So all I need to do is copy the link and then I can share it via social media, WhatsApp, via my own email address so that um, people know who it's from or else I can email the invitation with Doodle. This is quite useful because I can add multiple email, emails. So like I say, I can invite multiple people and they will all receive this message, which is fully customizable, but as you can see, has some elements of the information that I added during the creation flow is it's already added for me, but I can customize the message as I wish. The advantage of sending out invitations this way is that all of these uh, email addresses will receive the invitation with this message and a direct link to the group poll where they will be able to vote in a seamless fashion because we don't require any further information really. Additionally, they will be able to actually um, vote, um, they will be able to um, receive the automatic reminders. So if the deadline is coming up, perhaps in 48 hours, they will receive an email prompting them to vote because otherwise they won't have the option of voting within a couple of days. Additionally, on the organizer side, this is useful because if I email the invitation this way, these people are added to my poll as pending votes. Therefore, I can keep up to date with how the voting is actually going on this specific poll. However, for the purposes of the session, one thing I'm going to do is actually show you how this looks as a participant. So the best way for me to do this is to grab the direct link to this poll 
And what I'll do now is open an incognito window to show you how this looks when you're logged out of Doodle and you're just a general participant. So now I am acting as a participant. I've been invited to the quarterly committee meeting and now I need to vote on this. As you can see, I'm logged out. Therefore, I'm not a member of Doodle and so Doodle doesn't essentially know who I am. <clears throat> I can see who's organizing this poll what the poll is about, essentially. It's about the quarterly committee meeting, so perhaps I'm familiar with the fact that I, I should probably attend this event. I can see the duration, the exact address, that I can also dial in via Google Meet if needed. I can also see that the agenda has already been um, sent along with the poll. I can also see the legend around what the voting patterns mean, essentially, and how I can add my votes. I can see that these five options are not the only options that I have to select from because of this blue flag here, and that I need to vote by this specific date and time, otherwise I will no longer have the option of voting. So as you can see, I can check all of the dates and start applying my votes. So I'm selecting some random options here so that you can see how this all looks. Um, actually, I see there's a question. Do participants need to have a Doodle account to participate in a poll? So actually, as I just um, am showing you right now, it's it good timing for that question. As you can see, I'm fully logged out of Doodle. Therefore, I am able to vote as a participant. And the reason I'm able to do so is because I need to add some specific information. But before I go there, I'll just also say that you can fully decline the event as a participant. If you can't attend at all, you can just out of hand decline the whole thing. So to answer your question, uh, Kimberly, you can vote as somebody who does not have a Doodle account. And the reason you can do that is because all you need to do is enter your name and information. So I'm gonna say, Cameron Jones is my name. I'm adding my email. This will make sure that the organizer of the poll knows who I am. I can also check the summary of my selections just to make sure that I haven't made a mistake. And all that's left for me to do is submit the response. So now I voted. Uh, as the participant, I can see the details once again. I can see if it's an open poll and not hidden. Um, I can see the other uh, participants as necessary, and I can see the organizer. So basically, I've done my job as the participant. So now I'm going to go back to the organizer screen, and if I refresh, you will see that Cameron Jones has voted. To show you how this would look if you have multiple participants, I'm going to open up this other similar poll that I pre-created. So you can see numerous people have voted on this poll, and you can see in the colorful pattern here how they've all voted. As you can see, by default, Doodle has selected a specific time, which is uh, not the first time. The reason Doodle selected this time is because it's considered the best and earliest option. So what does this mean? Well, essentially it means that uh, if you take the count, for example, six have also voted here. However, what you can see is that um, three of the people have voted if need be, which means that yeah, it's a good option for me, but it's not the best option. I can perhaps attend if necessary, but it might not be the best option for me. Whereas if they've selected simply yes, that means I can attend this event. I'm fully good to go with that specific time. However, there's only one if need be here, but six participants. Therefore, that is the best earliest option, as you can see. So you can select any option you wish. However, this is what Doodle suggested. And I think I'm going to go with this specific option. All that's left for me to do now as the organizer is book the event. So now we can see that the event has been booked. Uh, the details are provided here once again. I can see who has been invited. As you can see here, I can see uh, somebody is not certain if they can. Other, otherwise, you might actually see who has not been able to go for this option specifically. But what you can see here is the time and day that was selected. So what happens at this stage? Well, myself as the organizer, I'm going to receive a confirmation email confirming that this is the time and date that has been selected for this quarterly committee meeting. Additionally, because I have a calendar connected to my Doodle account, 
this event will be added to my calendar without me having to take any action myself. So let's check this out. So April 14th at 2 p.m. We can see that it's been added. So on my Google Calendar, I can see the quarterly committee meeting has been added. The Google Meet video conferencing link has been added as well, which is obviously very, very helpful. The Google Maps link to the uh, where the event is taking place has been added, also very helpful. A list of participants, which is of obviously necessary to know, and uh, one person who's a, a maybe, so hopefully they will turn up. And then finally, the agenda for the event. So as you can see, all of the details have been added automatically to my Google Calendar. On the other side, the participants, because I have a connected calendar to my Doodle account as the organizer, all of these participants who voted in the affirmative will receive both a confirmation email and a calendar invitation. And the calendar invitation can be used to add to their own calendar tool, whatever they, that may be. It could be an Apple calendar or an Outlook Microsoft calendar. If, um, for example, some users or some participants did not vote for this date, they will receive the confirmation email, but they will not receive the calendar invitation. I can see there's another question here. Can I connect, uh, Christian is asking, can I connect more than one calendar type? Uh, for example, Google and Outlook. So yes, um, as I mentioned, I have a Google calendar connected to the Doodle account. However, within my account settings, I could also connect an Outlook calendar or an Apple calendar. So essentially I could have a Google, Apple, and Outlook calendar connected, and then when I'm creating the event, I can select uh, the like, I can select to see the availability on each calendar. Uh, you can also select where to send the meetings. So if I select perhaps if I've got three different calendars connected, I can select which one I wish for this event to be sent to once the meeting is booked. You do this by selecting it as your primary calendar within your account settings. Hopefully that answers your question, Christian. Thanks so much. Um, so yes, this, this event has now been booked. It's all ready to go. As I mentioned previously, you can reopen the invitation if you wish to do so. What this will do is um, provide you the option of changing the time if this doesn't happen to work for any reason at all. Um, so you have that flexibility that's right there. Um, the last thing I did want to show you is how uh, to circle back on what I showed you previously about limiting the number of votes per option. So what we can do is go back to our dashboard and I'll quickly show you what the setting looked like once more. Limit how many participants can select the time. So if you may recall, I suggest that this can be a good way to create a sign up sheet. And so let's say I'm going to create an option whereby I need to have a sign-up sheet for a specific conferencing room. So I'm going to say five, only five people can select that option at any one time. I've earlier on, I've created an example that we can use now. And so I'm gonna go there and show you how this looks. So conference room B sign-up sheet. As you can see, there are a list of participants here. However, as I've set a limit to the number of votes per option, you can see here that certain uh, times are now closed off because five out of five people have voted. Two more people could vote on this specific option if they wished, and so on and so forth. And how you can use this as a sign-up sheet is to ensure that you do not book your group poll. So you've collected your votes, but you don't book the specific time. If you do that, it will just, basically book this time to your calendar. What we are doing for this specific use case is exporting this information by going to the more drop down here and clicking export. You can also do this from your dashboard at the event. There's a drop down menu to the right hand side of it. And this will download an Excel file as you can see here. And with that Excel file, I can open it up into Google Sheets or Excel itself. And as you can see, we have now a macro level view of all of the votes and the information of each participant uh, next to it. So for example, with this view, what you can do is print out the page and then perhaps tape it to the door of conference room B. So essentially you are utilizing it as a sign up sheet. So that is that particular use case. Does anybody have any additional questions before we finish up?
Okay, I can see Ryan has asked a question. If I choose a final option that a participant didn't vote on, would they receive a calendar invite or confirmation email? So yes, as I, I previously mentioned, um, once you've uh, booked the event, any participant uh, who voted on that option will receive both the confirmation email and the calendar invitation. However, if they didn't vote on that option, they will still receive a confirmation email. However, they will not receive a calendar invite. Hopefully that clarifies this, Ryan. Uh, Nina has asked, how can my participants update their votes? Uh, quite easily, actually. So as you may have seen, when I was acting as the participant, once I cast my vote, I was brought to a confirmation screen. From there, it will, I, will be, I was provided an option to go and change my vote if necessary. However, it could be the case that I, I've since closed that particular tab. If this is the case, I can go back to the original email where I received the invite and or the confirmation of my vote, uh, I, rather. And from that particular email, I can navigate back to the page whereby I can basically change my options. So it is possible for the participants to update their votes if they need to. And I have another question from Kevin. If I hide the participant list, when I choose a date and close the poll, will the guests see each other on the calendar invite? No, they won't. So both within Doodle itself, the participants will not see other participants. But indeed, once the event has actually been booked, they will also not see those uh, other participants in the calendar invitation. So if there's complete privacy there, they will not see um, the other participants at any stage, essentially. So that is it. Uh, that is pretty much the entirety of the flow for uh, creating a group poll. I really hope you've enjoyed this uh, presentation and I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you so much.